Welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to USVA History Review by Standard. Uh, again, thanks for coming back. I think this is this is really helping everyone uh, succeed and, and, and help them study. So I want to continue on uh, with these. So thanks for staying with me. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. A couple of stutters here and there, a couple of technological uh, little malfunctions here and there, and of course my face being in the way of part of the PowerPoint at times too. Uh, sorry about all those little things, but hopefully you're listening, hopefully you're having fun uh, while you're studying for your SOL. Uh, without further ado, today we're going to get into standard 8B and C. Well, a few different things that we're going to talk about here. Uh, new technological innovations and, and advancements, a uh, term known as robber barons, and, and we'll get to specific ones. Uh, reasons for economic transformation uh, in America, and then the plight of African Americans yet again after the Civil War, uh, before what's known as the modern civil rights movement. Uh, that we know today. Uh, I realized I forgot this in the last one here, so if you want to take a look at this, this is um, just an easy snapshot of what we're going to be looking at today. Um, little uh, disclaimer here, it's not going to be an activity at the end here, so if you're looking for something to look at, uh, here, here are a couple things to look at. I would, I would definitely take a look at these lists. Uh, it's a lot of just uh, unfortunately, memorizing names and, and word association, especially with these names here, uh, and then the basic idea of um, discrimination and and segregation with with African Americans. So let's get right into it. Um, at this time, with with new immigrants and and the Industrial Revolution going on, we have a lot more new technology um, coming up in, in America at the time. Specifically, we have um, ideas, I guess, uh, this would be more of an innovation, that's the idea of a corporation. Um, and the corporation, again, think McDonald's, think Starbucks, uh, think uh, any, anything major chain restaurant, uh, and that would be a corporation. They're shareholders, uh, limited liability by its shareholders and its owners, uh, and it goes off into everybody, big, big businesses, right? Um, best from a steel process, a new way to to convert iron into uh, steel is really going to ramp up the production of uh, in factories, of the railroads, of tall buildings known as skyscrapers. Light bulb, uh, Thomas Edison perfects the idea of the light bulb uh, and, and makes it more... Uh, more, e uh, more easy to use, uh, safer, and electricity is going to become a big source of power. You're going to see cities like uh, Buffalo, where I'm from, uh, spout up because of electricity and having streetlights for the first time. Um, the telephone, uh, made by Alexander Graham Bell. The airplane uh, is going to be invented by the Wright brothers. Now, nothing that you can think of today in any of those things. Uh, we have much better light bulbs, much better telephones, much better airplanes than, than then. Uh, but we're talking over 100 years ago in some cases now of, of all these inventions finally popping up. Uh, then there's the assembly line. Uh, a lot of times, and that's Henry Ford. Um, the assembly line is often confused with Henry Ford making the first car. Henry Ford did not make the first car. He uses the idea of the assembly line and applies it to making the car and that's why the Model T comes out and that is the most affordable car at the time, making things more affordable, uh, ramping up production and thus uh, lowering the price of those things. Um, during that time there was big, big uh, what we like to call industry moguls, uh, also known as robber barons. These are the rich, rich, elite people owning essentially monopolies in their mode of business. Um, Andrew Carnegie, or Carnegie, he's a big, big leader in steel production at the time. Um, J.P. Morgan is a big financier. In fact, finances uh, the depression that happens in the late 19th, early 20th century. He, one person, uh, finances the entire depression of the entire United States. Yeah, think about that much money. Uh, John D. Rockefeller is an oil mogul, uh, owns about 90% of the oil business at the time. And then you have Cornelius Vanderbilt, uh, who owns the railroads at the time. Imagine owning the railroad uh, and, and everything that goes on, on it, including people and, and shipping materials back and forth. Now, what sets these guys apart uh, is not that they're just rich, rich guys who make 
a boatload of money, more more money than anybody has today uh, using inflation. But all these guys here become philanthropists and they use their money for good things. Yes, obviously you're going to have lavish homes and, and beautiful houses and things like that. But they're also going to fund things like education and the arts and music and all that different kind of stuff. And they're going to use their money like charity uh, we can think of today. So these guys, yes, they're rich. Yes, we, we can hate them and envy them, but they do great things for America. Okay, so some some reasons for this economic shift that happens in America. This idea of laissez-faire capitalism uh, comes into America where where competition wins. And uh, if you were ruthless and you would work hard, then you were going to be able to, to make it in this country. And, and that's what drives a lot of immigrants to come here. Um, laissez-faire capitalism is where the government is completely hands-off. I uh, hope you can see me down there, completely hands off of government. And I like to uh, make this distinction with laissez-faire. It almost looks like lazy, almost looks like lazy. So in, in terms of that, you can think of the government being lazy, meaning they're not coming into business. They're just letting business uh, happen. Obviously, we have an increase in labor supply uh, from immigration and then migration. People are moving from farms into the cities to work. Um, and you're going to see a big, big migration in African Americans. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, America has a lot of natural resources, mostly oil, uh, iron, and coal. Those are the big three that we have here in America. And that is what's going to fuel our industrial revolution. All right, let's talk about uh, the discrimination against uh, African Americans. Um, after the Civil War, obviously three great amendments happen uh, to the Constitution, freeing them, uh, allowing them to vote, and giving them full citizenship rights. However, people in the South don't want change. Uh, well, and as a matter of fact, people in the North don't want change either, but specifically to the South, um, there are going to be laws passed uh, called Jim Crow laws uh, that are going to discriminate against African Americans and, and essentially keep them down, keep them separate in society because uh, whites and blacks have never been free before. Too much change too soon, uh, as some white Southerners would say at the time. Um, Jim Crow was an... Uh, an actor, uh, a white actor dressed up in blackface essentially, and he would portray all of the negative stereotypes of African Americans. Um, and in order to push this legislation, saying to white people, hey, you don't want these uh, African Americans to be part of your society because look at what they're doing. They're crazy. They're stupid. They're, they're a laundry list of things uh, because that's what Jim Crow is doing. That's what this actor is doing. So a very uh, stereotypical thing turns into legislation that's not going to be overturned for, for quite some time in America. In addition to Jim Crow laws, there are groups like the Ku Klux Klan, like Citizens Councils later, um, where African Americans are going to be intimidated. And even though they're allowed to vote, they won't vote because they'll either get hung or beaten severely or uh, publicly humiliated or fired from their jobs. Uh, and therefore, African Americans aren't able to change what was happening anyway. African Americans are going to say, hey, look, we have all these rights. Like, what, what's going on? So they look to the courts. The NAACP is founded, and, and that is their mode of, of change, is to get out into the courts and, and to sue for their freedom. However, this backfires. Uh, in 1896, a man rides on a train car that was supposed to be desegregated, and he claims his his 14th Amendment right. However, the United States Supreme Court shoots down this idea and says that as long as things are equal, then they can be separate. As long as the black train car is equal to the white train car, as long as the black school is equal to the white school, that's okay. So Plessy v. Ferguson is essentially separate but equal. So Plessy v. Ferguson, separate but equal in terms of integration of African Americans into society. Um, and this, this rules the day until Brown v. Board in 1954. But we'll get into that uh, at, a, at a later date. So during the 20s, um, to escape this idea, uh, many African Americans leave the South and move up north. Uh, they, they move north for jobs in the cities, uh, specifically Chicago. 
uh, New York. Those are two major areas where African Americans go, and they want to leave the discrimination. So, so they do. Um, some African Americans at this time of note um, do go out and try and make their lives better. One such uh, woman is Ida B. Wells. She leaves uh, leads, excuse me, an anti-lynching crusade. Um, and calls on the federal government to take action. Um, in small circumstances, she was she was um, successful. However, in a large scale thing, lynching still rules the day in in the South uh, at that time. Um, Booker T. Washington believes the way to equality is through education and economic success. Essentially, pick up your bootstraps and, and do it. Um, go to school, uh, even if it's a black school, go to a college, even if it's a black college, and get integrated that way. Show whites that blacks can do it too. That's, that's what Booker T. Washington's idea was. And then W.E.B. Du Bois thought that education was meaningless without equality. So he wanted equality first. He wanted equality in the laws. He wanted equality in, in everything. Um, and, Eventually, like I, like I mentioned earlier, he helps create the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Uh, and through the NAACP, we see a, a major turn in legislation that's going to come in the next 40 years, even before the modern day civil rights movement. Um, and that's going to be the focus of the civil rights movement at the beginning of, of it, and that's to get laws overturned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned, there is no activity for us to do today. Uh, you're just going to have to go back through and, and try to memorize the, those names and associate those names with each other um, and, and come back next time and we'll finish up this standard. Have a good evening.